I think the first thing that I want to cover quickly is one of the things that I did yesterday. I made a little mistake and the year to date function didn't work. And it's a pretty basic mistake and it was quite silly on my part. And I, I don't know how I just skipped right over it. So I'm going to talk through quickly what I did wrong. Uh, and maybe you guys can learn from what I did wrong. So let's open up, and this is yesterday's class. I'm going to open up the Power Pivot window. And it's opening up in the background. Okay. So, guys, can you all see my screen? Cool. All right, now, if you remember yesterday, when we did the relationships, we actually connected on that uh, key over there, the date, date key. So if we have a look here, you'll notice that I've actually changed this over. Now, I, out of habit, I always connect on the key. And I, that's because I build warehouses where using that integer key is great for performance. In Power Pivot, you actually have to do your connections on the date data type because otherwise the, the functionality that you use later on um, doesn't work. This changes in the next version of Power Pivot um, where, where the, you aren't restricted to this. So uh, that's uh, going to be my excuse. Um, but really what you want to do is you actually want to do your join on a date value. Now let's assume that we don't have a date value. I've done one over here. What we want to do is we want to turn that key into a date value. Um, and that's pretty easy to do if we do some string manipulation. And this is still kind of data integration stuff. We'll get to more front endy stuff in, in a little bit. Just wanted to show you this final piece. All right, so we start off and we want to get the year. And of course, the year out of that key is dead easy. Right. Uh, now, what we might want to do is we want to add a slash in between there. Just use the ampersand. Also pretty easy. Um, now, month, not quite as easy, but also pretty uh, simple. We use the mid function. Let's go. And as you can see there, we've got a month. And we do the same thing for the day. I'm just going to copy it out. Right, and of course we then, uh, it's going to throw an error for a bracket in it. Yeah, let me take out that extra bracket. Right, and of course what we would do then is we'd string those together, create a string, and then use this function called date value. As soon as we've done that, and we create the relationship, um, which is there already. All right, so factory tail sales to date, and I'm using dim date over here. <coughs> as soon as we do that, a lot of the other front end goodness that so, that uh, is time intelligence and power pivot then begins to work for us. So if I take us over here, what I'm going to do firstly is I, I don't like where that. Uh, of the table is, so I'm actually going to move it around. So one thing that you'll notice in the front end, this pivot table tools, there are a lot of really, really cool things on this. We're going to show you a couple of them. So where do I want to move it to? Well, let's just move it there. And that's a little bit friendlier for me. Okay, now let me pull some of these uh, things out. Now remember yesterday that uh, the retail sales quarter to date just blew up in our faces. As you'll see, it's actually the same formula. So except that that's uh, year to date, we want quarter to date of course. Okay, well, that's it. Uh, yes, let's refresh everything. Ah, uh, Paul is asking, if we have multiple dates in the fact, can we create a relation to the same date dimension to each? Paul, in the current version of Power Pivot, you cannot. Um, that is what we call a role-playing dimension. 
what you would need to do in the current version of Power Pivot, and this changes in the next version, which is great, is you'd need to have three date tables, a order date table, a uh, sales date table. Now, you wouldn't actually need to build out everything in those tables. You could use that related function to go off and, and get some additional values and bring them into the table to make it a little bit more efficient. Um, but you would indeed need to have a table for each type of date. So you can't do what we call a role-playing dimension, connect the same fact table to the same date table. And in fact, let, let me just show you what it does. Uh, and Tim, I will jump into your question in uh, two seconds. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to make it factory tell sales. And I'm going to tab out, I'm going to make that the date. All right, let's actually just say uh, date add, uh, dates, comma one, comma, I think it's day, it's a D. Uh, it wasn't D, so let, let me just not use that. Um, so then what you, uh, you'll notice is if we try and create a relationship off that and we hit create relationship, we want to go uh, to dim date, you'll notice, now this is just an additional date, you'll notice that there is actually no dim date in the uh, list over here. So that is one thing. You can only have one relation between a uh, table and another table. All right, so Paul, I think that really covers what you were trying to get to. Let's dive into Tim's question just a bit. Now, um, Tim, there's a couple of different possibilities to answer what I think you're asking. So let's. Ass I'm going to assume that you're trying to change the data source location. You're trying to point to a. Um, you're trying to point to a different data source, or, or you want to actually change the connection so it points to dev instead of prod, right? So let, let's assume that you're working on dev and you want to. Yeah, you want to move from dev to prod. Cool. So all you'll do is you'll hit this existing connections button, right? And then you hit the uh, edit button, and Bob's your uncle. You you can change the data source location. It's pretty easy. 